so uh, this is lecture 10 uh, of this course on uh, analog MOS circuit design. Uh, so in the last lecture, uh, we were talking about how to realize a current source using a MOS device. So in that case, we have shown you two different uh, modes. Either you can use an NMOS device or you can use an PMOS device in order to represent the current source. And the example that I have shown in the last lecture, it incorporates two devices. One NMOS device which is acting as the amplifying device and the PMOS device which is acting as a load. And accordingly we have uh, calculated what about the expression of the gain. So it was nothing but GM1 times R1 parallel R2. So GM1 is nothing but the mutual conductance of the amplifying device and R1 is the output resistance of the amplifying device and R2 is the output resistance of the load. Now that time what I have shown is uh, the gate terminal and the source terminal of the load in AC sense they were connected together. What I mean to say is the gate and the source. So if I just uh, once again uh, visualize uh, the previous uh, uh, circuit it was something like that. Even for NMOS between gate to source you have battery connected like this let it be v1 so that this gate source terminal is properly biased and under ac condition we don't have any signal variation between these two nodes gate and source so whenever we have drawn the small signal equivalent model we have seen that these gate and source they were connected together now having considered this thing then the people have thought what could have been the scenario if I, if I connect the gate terminal and the drain terminal together. One second it will be two terminal device because we have three terminals like gate, drain and source. If I forget about the body or bulk for the time being then if I connect two terminals together then obviously we are left with only two terminals. So if I connect gate and source like this and obviously you need to provide certain bias so that the device is on. Then uh, what we have shown is uh, between drain to source, uh, this device acts like a current source. So now if I just consider a situation like this where uh, you have a MOS device, NMOS for example. And suppose this gate and the drain terminal of this NMOS device, they are connected together. So this one is the gate. This one is a drain and this one is a source. So once again, uh, you have a two terminal device between drain to source. You have only two terminals and there will be certain voltage between drain and source and certain amount of current will flow IDS if the device is properly biased and all. And then under this condition, what will be the behavior of this particular circuit? So in order to understand the notion of this particular circuit, obviously, uh, we have to go for the small signal analysis. So let me start with the small signal model for this kind of configuration. So you have a gate terminal over here, you have a source terminal and you have a drain terminal like this. So this is my gate, this one is drain and this one is source. Now between gate to source we know that let the voltage be V1 for example and between drain to source uh, the corresponding current source I mean the magnitude of the current source will be gm times v1 and between drain to source you have another resistance that is r0 and another additional uh, modification we need to do it over here which is nothing but connecting the gate and the drain terminal together that means I need to make a short circuit between gate and drain just like this. So ultimately these are the two terminals, these are the two nodes available to us. This is one node, this is another node. And I have to uh, visualize the behavior of the circuit between these two nodes only. Okay. So once again the same concept I have to apply that uh, in order to observe the resistance provided by this particular configuration, by this particular device is nothing but you can uh, simply find out the resistance 
by connecting one external voltage source like this whose amplitude is given by Vx plus minus Vx like this and let the current being drawn by the circuit is Ix uh, then the resistance offered so I can call this R out so this R out is nothing but the ratio of Vx and Ix now while doing this calculation I have to ensure that all the independent voltages and current source should be made inactive that is the notion to calculate the input resistance output resistance for any circuits like this now here you have GMV1 which is not an independent one rather a dependent voltage dependent current source so obviously you have to keep this one so now if you just observe the behavior of this particular circuit so now uh, you know, this particular current Ix is having two different components one is GM times V1 and the other one is the current which will flow through the resistance R0 okay so if I call this resist this particular current so uh, you know that what about the magnitude of this current so this is nothing but Vx upon R0 so this Ix is having two different components one is GM times V1 and the second one is Vx upon R0 so these are the two components assuming that this terminal is much more positive with respect to this terminal then I have to represent everything in terms of Vx so then I have to find out the relationship between V1 and Vx so it's quite apparent that uh, this is the terminal where I am applying the external voltage Vx and this is also connected to the gate terminal and uh, their other terminals are also tied up together so it's quite apparent that V1 in this particular case which is nothing but the gate source voltage difference is nothing but the Vx okay so then uh, I can uh, simplify this one as gm times Vx plus Vx upon R0 so from that what I can write is Ix upon Vx so it is easy to write it down which is nothing but gm plus 1 upon R0 so gm plus 1 upon R0 is Ix by Vx which is nothing but the inverse of the resistance so the inverse of the resistance is given by gm upon 1 plus r0 so what about r out so r out is nothing but 1 upon gm plus 1 upon r0 which is also equal to the parallel combination of two resistance 1 upon gm and r0 so from Ohm's law you can simply verify that this R out is given by the parallel combination of 1 upon GM and R0 which is nothing but so once again if you just uh, want to find out the exact value this is nothing but 1 upon GM times R0 divided by 1 upon GM plus R0 so which is equal to R0 divided by 1 plus gmr not okay so uh, this particular configuration will provide you a resistance is equal to r not divided by 1 plus gm r not and since we have only two terminals like drain and source and gate is already connected to the drain so this particular model is also known as a diode connected load so the name dates back from the bipolar junction technology where we have the concept of diode triode and so on so here also we have two terminals so it is known as a diode connected load diode connected load which provides an output resistance value is equal to 1 upon gm in parallel with r0 now since this particular configuration provides a certain amount of resistance and in most of the cases you will find that this resistance 
is ultimately governed by 1 upon gm because you have a parallel combination of two resistances 1 upon gm and r0 and the typical value of r0 is very large because as you know r0 is given by 1 upon lambda id uh, we know that r0 is given by 1 upon lambda id and for ideal case lambda is equal to 0 so r0 is going to be infinity if not the value of r0 is also typically very large that is the output resistance of the MOS device. So if I just consider the parallel combination of two resistances 1 upon gm and r0 so the equivalent resistance is normally governed by the lower out of these two. So normally this r out normally this r out is governed by 1 upon gm which is the lower one out of these two. So, so r out can also be approximated to be 1 upon gm if you just neglect the r0 to some extent. But if you are accurate enough in that case you have to find out the expression of r out involving both gm and r0. Now with this approximation what we can do is we can uh, move to the main circuit by involving uh, this particular device as a load of a common source stage. So uh, let me just move to the next slide and uh, let me draw the circuit. So this is the amplifying device and MOS. We have certain bias voltage. Just like this. Let me call these bias voltage to be V1. This terminal much more positive with respect to this terminal. And the V in input signal is applied over here. And you have a drain supply at this particular end and between these two between the drain supply and the drain of this particular MOS if I call it like M1 you have a resistance and instead of using a current source kind of load what I can do is I can place a diode connected load over here so already you have seen that this was the load what you have considered last time now what I can do is I can simply place this load on the top of the MOS M1 okay so let me just let me just connect this on the top of this so this is the load i'm talking about i'm just make a connection like this whose gate and drain they are connected together let me call this to be my m2 and I'd like to take the output from this particular terminal V out. Now in the small signal equivalent model, how does it look like? So this is the composite circuit. This is the composite circuit I'm talking about. Composite circuit. Now what about the small signal equivalent circuit? How does it look like? It's something like that. You have a MOS, fine, first MOS M1, whose source is grounded. There is no V1 in the small signal model, only you have V in, just like this. That is all about M1. And how to model this M2, which is a diode connected load? Already we have seen that this M2 is equivalent to, if I just uh, one second go back to the previous slide. So this is nothing but, so this configuration is equivalent to having a resistance between these two terminal drain and source whose value is given by R out. That is equal to 1 upon GM in parallel with R O. So here also I can do the same thing. So between these two terminal what I have is a resistance and whose value is nothing but this time I can write 1 upon gm2 because it stands for the second MOS parallel RO2 
and this terminal is connected to ground ac ground and we are taking the output from this particular node that is v out so that is the small signal circuit or small signal circuit or equivalent circuit then what i can do is i have to find out the small signal model for the mos device itself in order to find out the voltage gain what is that you know that in the small signal model what i have three terminals for the mos m1 you have a gate you have a source now i have to mark like g1 s1 and t1 now suppose this voltage is given by vgs1 between drain to source you have the current source that is gm1 times vgs1 and you have a resistance ro1 now the drain of this particular mos is connected to the source of mos m2 so drain of m1 is connected to the source of m2 and the drain of m2 is connected to the supply that is vdd so this one this point is d1 which is also equal to s2 and this point s1 which is at ac ground and that is also the terminal d2 because d2 is connected to vdd which is equivalent to ac ground so this is also d2 and between s2 to d2 what i have we have the resistance the equivalent resistance and that value is nothing but 1 upon gm2 parallel combination with ro2 so it will be uh, getting the output from this node and we are applying input signal between gate and the source of the first mos so this is my v in okay so now you have two resistances or you can also say three resistances because uh, these two resistances are compiled within a single resistance one upon gm2 parallel ro2 so this one is we have ro1 you have another resistance ro2 you have the third resistance one upon gm2 so now if we make some approximation over here uh, then this equivalent resistance between this drain one and this source one is nothing but simply one upon gm2 because ultimately you have three resistances you must not forget that you have three resistances between okay let me just change the color because it is pretty yeah so between d1 and s1 three resistances are there what are those one upon gm2 then you have ro1 and you have ro2 and out of these three whenever you have a parallel combination between these three resistances then obviously the equivalent resistance will be governed by the list out of these three and as you know ro1 and ro2 they are typically large with respect to one upon gm2 so ultimately the equivalent resistance between these two terminal is governed by one upon gm2 so under this condition if we go for the analysis once again uh, then it's quite obvious that v out is nothing but minus gm1 times the equivalent resistance because vgs1 is nothing but v in here so following the same analysis what i can do is for this particular case uh, let me just start with okay let me just find out the voltage uh, output voltage first and from that uh, we would uh, calculate the voltage gain so v out is nothing but minus gm1 times vgs1 times 
the resistance and here the resistance is basically 1 upon gm2 parallel combination with ro1 in parallel with ro2 but assuming that ro1 and ro2 is very very large with respect to 1 upon gm2 then i can make it approximate to be 1 upon gm2 then this is nothing but minus gm1 times vgs1 is nothing but v in times 1 upon gm2 so the expression for the voltage gain av turns out to be v out upon v in that is given by minus gm1 upon gm2 now you may wonder that uh, uh, ultimately we have got a expression of the voltage gain which is nothing but the ratio of two transconductance and if i assume that uh, these two devices are acting almost similarly then under this condition this ratio can be very very close to one unity so or uh, we cannot have a very high value of gain uh, out of this configuration then what is the utility of having a circuit like this so in order to uh, answer this question once again i have to go back to the expression of the gm that is the transconductance we have uh, shown you uh, three different uh, expression for the transconductance or mutual conductance one was like this mu n c ox w over l vgs minus vth that was one expression we have another expression like this twice id divided by vgs minus vth and the third expression was something like that it was like twice id mu n c ox w by l so now uh, for this particular case uh, we will uh, use the third one the third expression which is nothing but square root of twice id mu n c ox w by l so then uh, this expression of voltage gain turns out to be you have twice id1 mu n c ox because this is technology dependent parameter so this will be constant throughout and then we have w by l1 divided by twice id2 mu n c ox w by l2 now if you closely observe the circuit diagram once again over here so the current id1 which is flowing through this path between drain to source of the first mos the dc current the bias current and for mos2 it will flow through this path it's quite apparent that the value of id1 is equal to id2 because there is no other escape route for the current so id1 the dc current id1 is equal to id2 so then this gets cancelled and mu and c ox is also technology dependent parameter so that is also vanished then ultimately what we have we are left with w by l of the first mos and w by l of the second mos now that's an interesting observation what we can have over here so far we have seen that the expression of the voltage gain involves the mutual conductance and the output resistance of the mos device gm and r not sometimes r not one with r not two in parallel apart from that you have some gm as well now you know that these parameters both r1 and gm they are functions of temperature and other ambient conditions now if the temperature changes or even if the bias condition changes then obviously you have a different values of gm for example if i consider let me let me just consider this expression uh, uh, for uh, the mutual conductance the transconductance twice id upon vgs minus vth now if the bias current changes then obviously the value of the transconductance will also be modified and the temperature is also having some serious role on the value of the threshold voltage so the value of gm is depending upon 
the ambient temperature as well as the bias condition. However, if I consider this particular expression for the voltage gain, here we find that all these dependencies are completely left out. We are having an expression of the voltage gain which is nothing but the W by L ratio of the two different MOS device W by L1 upon W by L2 and these are the device dimensions. Now once you fabricate the device on a chip then the width and the length of the devices are fixed. It cannot be changed. So even if the temperature changes, even if the bias condition changes but the width and the length of the devices cannot be changed. So now in order to achieve a higher gain what you can do is you can increase the width of this particular device the first one or you can also reduce the width of the second device. So first device is nothing but the amplifying device and second device is nothing but the load. So in order to increase the voltage gain so if he can be increased so that can be increased either you increase the W by L ratio of the amplifying device or you reduce the W by L ratio of the load, the diet connected load. If any of these two conditions are satisfied, then the voltage gain can be increased because ultimately the voltage gain is a ratio of these two parameters. However, you have to uh, keep in mind that uh, this expression of voltage gain is uh, obtained with the condition uh, or with the approximation that uh, this RO1 and RO2 they are neglected. Under this condition we have got this expression. However, if you are accurate enough then uh, you cannot uh, approximate the voltage gain to be like this and if you are accurate enough then uh, let me just show you the accurate expression uh, of the uh, voltage gain. So the accurate expression of the voltage gain. So if we uh, let me write like accurate in which case we should not approximate anything. So now uh, once again you have uh, the same thing uh, GM1, VGS1 and VGS1 is equal to V so everything being the same. Now you have three resistances RO1, RO2 and one upon GM2. So then you have this AV accurate. So I am just writing the uh, final expression of the voltage gain because uh, other calculations will be same as it is. So then AV accurate is given by minus GM1 times you have 1 upon GM2 in parallel with RO1 in parallel with RO2. That's all. So now if I uh, keeping this particular expression of voltage gain in mind, if I once again draw the small signal model or uh, let me just uh, very quickly draw uh, the circuit diagram itself and then from that we can have some uh, generic rule to calculate the voltage gain. So do something like that. We have V in over here. Let me call this as M1, this as M2 and uh, we will take the output from this terminal. So equivalently what we have, so equivalently what we have is we have a MOS device over here, the amplifying MOS device with three terminals, gate, source and drain. Source is grounded and between gate and source we have applied the signal V in like this. Okay. Now we will be taking the output from this particular terminal that is V out. Now you have to identify what about the resistance available between the this particular node to the AC ground. You have to identify those resistances. What are the different resistances available? between the drain terminal and the AC ground terminal. Now for this particular MOS M1 already you know if I don't want to get rid of the channel length modulation then obviously 
we will be having a resistance between the drain and the source or drain and the AC ground which is nothing but RO1. So this is the resistance RO1 which is there in between D1 and AC ground. And now for this circuit M2 what we have from this node to ground this particular device can be modeled as a parallel combination of two resistances. What are those two resistances? One was 1 upon GM2 and the second one was RO2. So between those two terminals, so if this is my ground terminal, AC ground terminal, now M2 can be modeled as a parallel combination of two resistances, just like this. Let me call this to be say 1 upon GM2 and this to be say RO2. So this is the amplifying device M1. So this is the amplifying device and this is all about M2. So the expression of the voltage gain says that AV is given by minus GM1 times 1 upon GM2 parallel RO1 parallel RO2. That means the expression of the voltage is nothing but we have minus sign over here obviously. Then the mutual conductance of the amplifying device that is GM1. So mutual conductance or transconductance of the amplifying device. So mutual conductance of the amplifying device because M2 doesn't amplify. It acts like a load here. So mutual conductance of the amplifying device times what we have, we have the equivalent resistance between the output node and the AC ground. The equivalent resistance between the output node and the AC ground. So what about the equivalent resistance over here? You have one resistance coming out from M1 that is RO1. And we have two resistances because of M2. One is 1 upon GM2, second one is RO2. So we can write, so this is the product of equivalent resistance between the output node and AC ground, AC ground point. Now if you can remember this generic expression of the voltage gain for a common source amplifier, then without drawing the small signal model, just by observing the circuit itself, it will be easier for you and faster for you to calculate the expression of the voltage gain. Once you have, voltage, once you have a circuit like this, you know that okay this uh, device M1 is acting like an amplifier for this particular purpose. So I need to find out what about the GM of this particular device. So I need to take only this one into our account. And then what about the output terminal? You know this is my output node. Okay so then you try to find out what about the resistance. Equivalent resistance available between the output node and the AC ground. So one is this one RO1 and these two are coming because of the diet connected load. Now this is the generic expression. So from that generic expression uh, you can find out some specific case with some approximation. If this R1 and R2 are considered to be very large with respect to 1 upon GM2 then you can simply ignore this one and then ultimately uh, we are left with minus GM1 upon GM2. However if you are accurate enough uh, then you can uh, find out the exact expression for the voltage gain. And uh, this particular configuration, as I was mentioning, uh, this is known as, this particular configuration is known as, it's a common source stage. So common source stage. In the last lecture, uh, we have talked about a common source stage with a current source load. But this time the load is not a current source. Rather, it's a, diode connected load. So common source stage with diode connected load. And with proper approximation, 
uh, this uh, voltage gain of the direct connected load can be made insensitive to the ambient temperature and the bias condition. So that is the biggest advantage uh, achieved from this particular circuit which you did not have for a common source stage with a current source load. Okay, so uh, let me conclude uh, uh, my today's discussion on the common source stage here and in the next lecture uh, we will talk about uh, other variants of the common source stage and at the same time uh, we will also be emphasizing in finding out the input and the output resistance of those amplifiers because as you know for an amplifier the voltage gain is not only the important parameter which you need to consider apart from the voltage gain the input resistance and output resistance and as well as the bandwidth of the amplifier also plays some vital role in selecting the amplifier for some specific applications. Now, as of now, we have talked about only the, the expression of the voltage gain, how to calculate the voltage gain and how can you compare uh, the value of the voltage gain for different types of the loads. We have started with some discrete resistance like RD. Then what we have done is we have just replaced that RD by means of a current source load by involving some uh, MOS device. And also uh, in this particular lecture, what we have done is we have also used another typical load which is called a diode connected load for which the gate and the drain terminal are connected together. And we have calculated the voltage gain for each of these cases. But the calculation of the input resistance and the output resistance for those devices are yet to be solved. Now at this particular moment, I can only tell you one thing that uh, since uh, this is a common source stage and the input signal is applied at the gate terminal, and as you know that uh, between gate and the channel, you have an insulator and which is the unique property of a MOS device. So for common source stage, the input resistance ideally is equal to infinite because uh, between uh, gate to source, you don't have any uh, flow of current, ideally zero. But if you just consider some other uh, second order effect, then you have some amount of current whose magnitude is very small. For that case, you can calculate the expression for the input resistance but that value is pretty large so as long as uh, we talk about the common source stage so the input resistance is very large we should not be bothered about that however uh, we need to take into account the output resistance because uh, as long as you operate those devices or those uh, amplifier circuits as an as a voltage amplifier then you must require uh, the corresponding output resistance should be small enough so that uh, the other advantages can be considered properly. So that discussion uh, we will do in the next class uh, along with some other uh, variants of the common source stage.